Well, good evening and welcome once again to the LBJ Grasslands. Tonight's exercise is a beam comparison between the Phoenix TK-16 V2 on the left and the TK-20R V2 on the right. Now, the two may appear functionally similar. Lighting modes are the same, 100 lumens difference in turbo in favor of the 16. In terms of form factor, the 20 is slightly longer and heavier. Uh, that does make a difference to me personally, and I'll discuss that in the summary. However, I will say that I do like the charging mode on the 20 better. And as of the night that I'm recording this video, there's a $30 price difference in favor of the 16. And again, that's based on list price as of the night that I'm recording the video. Now, what do you get for your extra 30 bills on the 20? I think the best answer is higher candela for every one of the lighting modes. Is that going to be the advantage that tips it in favor for you making a purchase? I don't know. We'll look at the beams in each mode under a variety of conditions here at the grasslands, and then I hope you will have enough information to make that decision. Okay, I always like to do at least one or two tests when there's still some ambient light out. So this simulates a situation where there's just enough light for me to see what I'm doing around camp. Maybe I'm staging my gear for a search and rescue exercise, but there's not enough light for me to see into the trees. And in Wilderness SAR, yeah, I spend a lot of time searching tree lines. So first, let's look at the TK-16 V2. I'm just gonna call that the 16. In medium mode, it will always be on the left of the camera. There it is in medium. The 20 is going to be on, always be on the right. Again, in medium. And hopefully it shows up okay on the iPhone, but probably one of the first things you'll notice is that Higher candela light tends to mean brighter and narrower beam. Now, is that an advantage to you? Really depends. If most of your use cases are close range, lower mode, you might prefer the wider beam. Now we're gonna do the same test in a different location and we'll look at high versus high. Okay, same test, different location, high versus high. First, the 16, that's high. Hand it back and forth a bit. And then I'm gonna move that out and there's the 20. I think it's easier to see the much narrower beam in this view. And then now let's bring them kind of side by side. And there you go. All right, we are right at dusk looking from the campground over the road to a tree line. I do a lot of work searching tree lines in wilderness search and rescue. Line of sight to the furthest tree in that tree line from this point is about 115 to 120 yards. Now at these distances, probably the most important mode to me in any flashlight is high. Turbo is fun, but I use that only in very brief bursts. The most sustained mode that I use under all lighting conditions is high. So let's look at the 16 first. Pan it back and forth. This is in high. Now I'm going to bring the 20 in, 16 out. And then both of them side by side. Very hard to see on the iPhone, I suspect, but I, ha I do have better visibility inside the far tree line with the 20, but the 16 lights up a slightly wider area. So 
that's kind of the trade-off between the two. Next, I'm going to let it get a bit darker, and we'll do the same comparison, turbo versus turbo. Okay, same view. You're looking at my headlamp in high or 2000 lumen mode. We've had a few vehicles go by, so that stirred up some dust in the air. I actually think that's good. I like to test under imperfect circumstances, so I'm going to bring the 16 in turbo while I turn my headlamp off. And then here's the 20 in turbo. I'll do a side-by-side -side sustained turbo comparison towards the end. What I want to do now is go back and look at the uh, lower modes. Okay, you probably remember this view from the beginning. I have the 16 on the left in Eco, 20 on the right in Eco. Now let's up that to low. There's the two right together, then let's go to medium. Okay, next I'm going to show you eco and low in an activity that I do quite a lot in Wilderness Search and Rescue. Okay, this part's going to be a bit difficult to film. I hope it works out. One of the things I do a lot in night search and rescue is tracking. Now we've got some soft dirt in front of me. I've got my headlamp on 400 lumen flood. Now, I walked across all this soft dirt with hiking shoes earlier, and even looking at it, you know, pretty much straight down, I can see a lot of ripples and so forth in the, in the dirt, but I can't see anything definitive in terms of a track. So I like to use a tactical light in a lower mode. This is low on the 16, and when you put it at a low angle, Kind of hard to see right here, but there's the back part of a left print right in front of me, right there in the middle of the beam, is uh, what looks to be a right footprint. Now, this is low on the 16. I get nearly the same result out of Eco. In fact, I might say the contrast and the shadowing looks a little bit better with uh, Eco on the 20. So there's another kind of around the camp use of the low and Eco modes and how I might favor the higher Candela on the uh, 20 for tracking. Uh, next we're going to go back and look at sustained turbo, then some photonic barrier test, and then a wrap up. This is a slightly different view out to the row. We've got some trees on the left side. I have my headlamp in turbo or 3000 lumen combined flood and spot. We're going to take the uh, 16 and the 20 and look at high mode first and see how it uh, cuts through the headlamp. First the 16 and high. Now the 20 in high. Okay, I've got the uh, truck lights on in high. And speaking of high, and that's the most important mode of a light to me, there is the 16 in high.
and the 20 in high. Got one more interesting uh, comparison between the two, then a wrap up. Okay, sustained turbo test. I'm going to turn the headlamp off and run the 16 and 20 side by side in turbo, and we'll be uh, looking at uh, how aggressive the step down is. 16 on the left and 20 on the right. I mean, first thing I notice is that the 16 heats up really quick. The 20 is catching up in heat, but not as hot. Okay, approaching one minute, I'm not ready to drop the lights. And there we saw the 20 step down. 16 is still going. So if you're interested in lighting things up in turbo sustained, um, you're gonna find the step down on the 20 to be uh, more aggressive. 16 is definitely hot. Uh, 20 is very warm but more comfortable, but the 20, the 16 rather, is still really cranking it out. Minute and a half, roughly. I'm used to holding hot lights. I do this all the time. I think most people would find the uh, 16 uh, very uncomfortable at this point. I'm getting assaulted by bugs, so. Uh, At the end of the video where I evaluated the 20, I promised to answer the question, will the 20 completely replace the 16 in my loadout? I think the operative word is completely, and the answer is no. The form factor of the 20 is just cumbersome enough that while the 16 here serves well as a left shoulder light, now I have to move my hands behind my shoulder to operate this, the 20 is more cumbersome. The 16 can be easily placed in a knife pocket and brought to bear later. Never had an accidental discharge in well over a year. The 20, again, much more cumbersome to put in a knife pocket. The 16 is more compact, lighter. I can just throw it in the back of my ruck and use it as an auxiliary light in the event that I replace the left shoulder light for a particular mission. The 20 works great here mounted on the right strap of my ruck and used as a free light. So I do like the higher candela. I do like it for tracking. I do like it for certain downrange identifications. But for wilderness search and rescue, this is my new default configuration. Unless I have additional information about the area I'm searching or I have previous knowledge of the territory, if I really don't know much at all about where I'm going, this is the configuration. I would probably leave the, the right strap light, the 20, fixed and switch out the left shoulder light given that I have uh, more information in advance. But I hope you got to see enough of the beams side by side under different circumstances in order to make a decision. What works best for you, I can't tell you that, only you can tell yourself. As always, thanks for watching the video. I appreciate your time and I hope you got some good information.